it's that time of the year with free agency approaching where stuff gets pretty crazy borderline insane and nothing is different this year especially when it comes to the baltimore ravens they are extremely busy they have a lot of stuff to take care of they have plenty of things that are on their agenda in the coming days and then of course the coming weeks one you got with odell beckham jr what's gonna happen with him you gotta make a decision ASAP on what you're going to do with OBJ. Are you going to keep him? Are you going to let him go? What's going to happen with him? And then with an even bigger price tag, you got Justin Matabike. And with Justin Matabike, we'll know what the Baltimore Ravens are going to do with him officially by tomorrow because they already said it, though. They, they already let us know. If we can't come to a contract agreement with Justin Matabike, then that franchise tag is certainly on the way. So we'll see what happens and when it happens within the next 28 hours or so but then but then there's more because the baltimore ravens in different kind of fashion they are in a, a very big time running back market in free agency and they have a lot of options but somebody spoke out about those options and then one of those options is actually showing that hey i can still be an option and we're going to talk about that very, very shortly. Before we get into it, team, keep it clean. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Turn your notifications on so you do not miss not a single video, not a single update, not a single thing. Especially because next week it's going to be going crazy. Real crazy. And we're going to keep you all updated with everything going on with the Baltimore Ravens. And we will also talk about some other teams, specifically in the AFC North, but just in the NFL in general, on what they do in free agency. So y'all stay tuned for that. But make sure you turn your notifications on and leave a like on the video. And know that I love y'all and appreciate y'all. And let's just get right into it. So, last week, somebody from the Baltimore Ravens, according to Jeremy Fowler, they made some very interesting comments on Saquon Barkley. And they said this. They said, could you imagine Sa <coughs> Saquon Barkley and Lamar Jackson in the same backfield for the Baltimore Ravens running game? And when we think about it as Ravens fans, it's like, oh, my goodness, that would be crazy. Because we already know with Lamar Jackson, just about anybody that's in that backfield with him, he makes their job a lot easier because just the threat, just for defenses thinking about Lamar Jackson possibly taking off. I mean, you already got to worry about him throwing the ball and him connecting with his receivers and tight ends. But then just the thought of him scrambling too, that makes it just that much annoying, that much more annoying to defend Lamar Jackson. But if you have somebody like him and then you have a Zaquan Barkley lined up right next to him, oof. Goodness, <laughs> that would be very, very scary. And as Ravens fans, we think about it. We, we, we think about that scenario. We envision that scenario on how that would be having Saquon Barkley in the backfield for the Baltimore Ravens. And one thing that I, I can honestly say when it comes to this running back market and it comes to the Baltimore Ravens, I am very excited about the running back market a lot more than I have been in the past because of the names that are out there because of like Jeremy Fowler said before the pedigree of names that are out there and he did mention that the Baltimore Ravens they plan on adding a running back with some pedigree but I'm very excited about it just because of the Baltimore Ravens and the playoffs because as we've known the Baltimore Ravens when they have been at their best when they have been the most dominant team in the NFL Come the most tough playoff games for them, the most important playoff games for them, what has happened to the running game, they have allowed it to be non-existent. Remember in 2019, the Baltimore Ravens went 14-2. They were dominating everything. And then they decided to hand the ball off to their running backs, what, nine times in that game? They never tried to establish a running game with their running backs at all. And then, of course, in this AFC Championship game from this year, they, they went, what, 13-4? and four? They were steamrolling the league, going through everybody. And then they decided to hand it off to their running backs only six times. And guess what? Both years, 2019 and then this year, 2023, they had the number one running game in the league. And then what made it worse this year, they had the number one defense in the league too. And they had so many ways that they could get the job done, but the Baltimore Ravens decided, you know what? We're not going to get the job done. But what makes me excited about these running backs is the fact that they have so many options and they have so many quality options and they have names that – you just simply can't ignore, and you have to respect. So if they have a name that they're paying a good amount of money to and the name that you have to respect, then how can you deny them, especially in the most crucial moments of your season? So that makes me just have a little bit more hope in, in the possibility of the Baltimore Ravens actually establishing and continuing to rely on a running game when it matters most. So 
with Saquon Barkley, though, um, and we've talked about him a lot this offseason, of course, but with him, I would just be worried about the injuries. That's, that's the only thing. With Derrick Henry, uh, big bruising back, downhill runner. Once he gets going, you know that's a wrap. Uh, and I think he, the Baltimore Ravens could get it done with Derrick Henry. Um, but again, it's just, will he be a good enough fit for their offensive line? And we're going to talk about free agency in a couple of days, some different things they could do with their offensive line. Uh, but the Baltimore Ravens, we, we've talked about the Derrick Henrys. We've talked about uh, the Saquon Barkleys. And, and there's some other running backs that you could throw in the mix as well. We talked about Alvin Kamara, too. But there's another running back that he said, you, you, wait a minute, don't forget about me. Don't forget about me, and he's somebody that has made plenty of plays for the Baltimore Ravens already, that being J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins, five and a half months out from his injury, from his surgery, he posted the following video. And what's so crazy about that video, what's really insane about that video is that J.K. Dobbins, I don't see no limp. I don't see him hobbling. Now, he's not running long distance, so I get that. So he probably still got a little ways to go. But J.K. Dobbins is letting it be known to the NFL world. Don't forget about me. I'm still here. So this makes the Baltimore Ravens, and, and they talked about it. They said that they perhaps want to bring a J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards back. They said... That they've been talking to those guys. Eric DaCosta said that. Um, but that's, of course, to be determined. I, I definitely think Gus Edwards is gone for sure. I, I could see J.K. Dobbins being gone for sure. But we won't know till we know it. Nothing is official until it's official. And I know a lot of Baltimore Ravens fans are on the fence when it comes to a J.K. Dobbins. Because we see it. It's there. The talent is there. It's clearly there. J.K. Dobbins is a do-it-all type of running back. He's a home run hitter. He's shown us all of that already. But the injuries are just taken away from his career. He's taken away. From his rookie year, he showed us like, hey, I can play in this league. I can get this job done. But the job keeps getting cut short because J.K. Dobbins keeps ending up being hurt. And it's been so unfortunate, man. It's been really unfortunate. I've said it plenty of times. I said it during last season, and I've said it during this offseason, too. The only way I see J.K. Dobbins returning to the Baltimore Ravens is if they sign him to an extremely low deal, extremely low deal for a little amount of money, probably not much guaranteed money, if any at all. That would be the only way I see him returning to the Baltimore Ravens. But I think, in my honest opinion, I think it would be best for J.K. Dobbins to get a fresh start somewhere else. Just a clean slate just to run it back somewhere else and just try to get his career off to not a different start because his career is obviously started, but <clears throat> get it on a different path because with J.K. Dobbins, it's, it's been tough. It's been tough, and you feel for J.K. Dobbins. Now, one of my guys, Trust Nas 8, shout out to my guy, by the way. He had a very interesting opinion on J.K. Dobbins and where he could end up landing, and he said that J.K. Dobbins should and could possibly go to the Chargers, and I was like, oh, that is a really, really good point right there. The L.A. Chargers with Justin Herbert and Jim Harbaugh, but there is somebody that he wasn't the happiest with, especially with their coaching decisions, and that being Greg Roman. So with Greg Roman being the offensive coordinator there, hey, regular season, you know you're going to eat. You're going to feast. Like, And I expect Justin Herbert to have a very good, efficient year this year. I expect his passing numbers to go down as far as yards, touchdowns, they could maybe stay the same. Uh, but I expect his interceptions to go down as well. Because that's what Greg Roman is based off of. He's based off of the running game. And he's based off of you just having a very high efficiency rate. So we'll see what kind of impact he has on Justin Herbert and that entire Chargers offense. But I expect, again, passing-wise efficiency to go through the roof. And running game... 
to be up there as well. Probably a top five running game, whoever their running backs end up being. Uh, but And the tight ends to, to feast as well, whoever their tight ends end up being too. But as far as J.K. Dobbins, I do like that he's letting the NFL world know right before free agency too that timing is everything because he could have posted this like two, three, four weeks ago. Well, then the timing would have been different too as far as how far out he was removed from the injury and from the surgery and everything. So maybe that timing was based off of, hey, this is when I could put my best video out before free agency and really show these teams like, hey, I'm good. And the timing of this post is nice too because – Free agency is just the beginning. Like, you still, free agency is in March. You, you still got OTAs on the way. You got the team activities, and then you got, of course, uh, training camp and all that. So him showing how healthy he is right now, even though he still got a little bit of ways to go, that's a good thing for him because it lets the teams know, like, hey, I'm going to be ready for the season. I'm going to be there at the beginning of the season. So you want to sign me now, get me under contract, let's take care of business. But trust me, either way, I got you. But I think it's also a reminder to the Baltimore Ravens, too, to just give them a, rem a reminder and not let them forget about J.K. 